Hi there, beloved. Welcome to this video. We are going to immediately continue our journey uh, with the topic freedom in Christ. We were talking last time about the maximum contrast and that's what, what we are going to continue on, just uh, some slides. Uh, we have to see the pattern, have to recognize that the darker the background, the better God's greatness will shine, obviously. So just to show you again the same schedule. Um, so if it breaks over here and it looks like something goes wrong, no, it's all according to plan because it first will go to the to the maximum of evil. So it's going worse and worse in the world until the limit of evil is reached because God has determined uh, beforehand a limit for evil. And if that limit is, um, is uh, reached, then the maximum glory, you see the level of glory here, the maximum glory is in, in reality intended to be over here, Again, just a simple example um, that God will accomplish with all of creation over here. Maximum glory due to knowledge of evil. That is the reason. So I'm not going to go through the schedule again, of course. It's just to show you um, uh, in a picture form how God works. So a perfect plan requires maximum contrast. Well, in God's book, that is. Because uh, otherwise the plan would not have been perfect. He wants the maximum contrast because he wants to maximize our glory. And with our, I don't mean believers now only, I mean ultimately everyone, all of creation. The glory of all of creation. Let's read. Revelation 13 8 where it says that the lambkin was slain from the disruption of the world so here the lambkin was slain was that so in time in terms of um, in terms of realization no it was like this in God's plan because the moment sin because here sin entered the universe this is before Adam and Eve before Adam, before humanity existed. So this is uh, how the first eon ended, the disruption of the world, and here on this, uh, at the same moment, the lambkin was slaughtered, so to speak, from slain, from the disruption of the world. Very important. In order to just um, understand all, I will also emphasize that the members of the body of Christ were chosen uh, like Ephesians 1 5 or 4 says before the disruption of the world before because b that means before sin entered the universe when the humanity was created sin was already in the universe not in the human world but in the spiritual world, in the celestial world. But even before time started, before the Ionian time started, we were already given grace in Christ. That is 2 Timothy 1 verse 9. Read it for yourself. We continue. Acts 2.23 This one, and that's Jesus, given up, in the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God, you, Peter says to the Israelites, gibbeting by the hand of lawless, of the lawless, assassinate. Peter is accusing the Israelites in, as a whole, as a people, that they assassinated Jesus Christ by the hand of the lawless. However, Everything that happened to Je Jesus was planned before the plan went to in effect. Went to uh, went into effect. Sorry. So um, 
it says here specifically Jesus was given up how in the specific counsel and for knowledge of God it's his own father who planned this and who impart this imparted this in the hearts of the Jews and the Jewish leaders especially and of course the lawless ones like uh, the Romans so it's God who did all of this not even Satan but ultimately God and it, the thing is that humiliation and Jesus went to the great through the greatest humiliation possible that emphasizes glory second corinthians uh, 4 7 now we have this treasure in what kind of vessels earthen vessels humiliated vessels with what reason what is the motive behind that so that the transcendence of the power that will be manifested in us may be of god and not of us so that's why god deliberately put the treasure of uh, our faith in earthen vessels then we are totally uh, convinced that the transcendence of god's power may be of him not of us but he is emphasizing that that so-called seeming contradiction look at ezekiel uh, 37 11 who hitherto have been saying our bones are dry and our expectation has perished that means practically all hope is lost that's where god wants us and also israel because that's how god works so it is hopeless the pressure is off that is the intention because then at that time god will take action and it's very important that the pressure is off what does it mean when is the pre when is the pressure on when we still think we can contribute then the pressure is on then the pressure of oh we have to uh, testify on the streets the pressure in terms of we have to live good we have to be an example always that pressure on us but the moment our hope is of in our own capability is gone then the pressure is also off we don't know it anymore we are totally lost and then god takes god takes action so uh, the greater the contrast the greater the result will be romans 3 5 now if our injustice is commanding god's righteousness what shall we declare you see the point god take god took care of the fact that all of us are in justice in order to command god's righteousness that is the whole way of working his method so first the reduction and then the display of power jesus first puts mud on the blind man's eye before having the eye washed in the jordan john 9 6 as an example elijah makes the challenge even harder by getting the altar all wet with water first kings 18 35 because as you can understand if fire falls from heaven then it will be even harder for that fire to uh, to remain on the altar when it's so wet with water that's what he did on purpose of course he makes the situation seemingly hopeless god makes it much harder for gideon and greatly reduces his army from 32,000 to a measly 300 people soldiers judges 7 
verse 2 to 7. So let's be, uh, let us realize this, right? So then we will switch to um, forgiveness versus justification. And believe me, it's a world of difference. They are operating in totally different realms. Let's see. Forgiveness presupposes the presence of guilt. Thus, you need to be guilty first. I, I hope that's clear, right? Justification presupposes the absence of guilt. Thus, innocent. Think about it. Let's, let's park here. So, if you are um, to ask for forgiveness, that means you admit your guilt because you're guilty in a certain realm. And, and you have sinned, so you have built up guilt. You ask for forgiveness, the the sin has been forgiven or the guilt has been uh, set free. It has been, how do you say that, um, um, covered. Okay, it's not, it's overlooked. The next hour you sin again. Build up guilt. Ask for forgiveness. And the guilt is overlooked again. Not, uh, it's not imputed, the consequence. Okay, so that means you have to be very uh, insecure in life if you live that way. And Christians are. They don't know for sure if they are going to die in Christ or not in their thinking. Because they think the moment I sin, not even knowing that I sinned, and I die because of one, uh, 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 an accident as an example, then probably I die in my sins. You see what's happening? This realm of forgiveness is not for this time and it's not for us. It is for Israel and, in, and it's valid in other eras, in the past and in the coming future. It will be uh, valid again, but not in this era where we live. That is the situation. It is about justification that is being declared innocent. And if you are innocent, you have never been guilty. You are not guilty currently and you will never be guilty in the future. That's a guarantee because you are declared innocent. This is huge and a huge difference. Let's go through the table further. Forgiveness works in the realm of the executive power. So the, the power of the king or the president of the prime minister, if you want, uh, the executive, the director. He is the one who, um, how do you say that, who um, uh, info or, or cover the guilt, so to speak. While justification works in the realm of the judiciary. The judge is doing that. He is declaring you uh, innocent. And um, forgiveness can be revoked after the fact. Thus, it is shaky. Did I mention that? Well, if not, now I'm mentioning it. It can be revoked. So it is, it's all insecure. It's not stable. It's shaky. It's terrible. Sorry. Wow. While justification can never be revoked. So it is very stable. You are on stable ground then. Forgiveness is based, based on works. What do I mean also? It is conditional. I didn't put that here, but it is conditional. Like Israel's evangel is conditional. The thing is, if you fail to forgive your um, neighbor, then God will not forgive you. You can only receive forgiveness from God if you forgive your neighbor. Remember our Father who art in heaven? 
Yep. So, uh, it's based on works, while justification is based on faith alone, not works. Only faith, Romans 4, verse 5. Only faith. Forgiveness is about overlooking a debt. So, because of the shelter, the cover. So, the debt is covered. But there's still the issue of debt. But it's covered. But it's still under the cover. While, justif uh, while justification says there is no debt. Not above and not under any cover. There is no debt whatsoever. Nothing to overlook. Forgiveness, there is guilt in that realm of forgiveness. There is guilt, so the guilt is there, but the consequence of that guilt is not imputed. While in the realm of justification, there is no guilt whatsoever. So there is nothing to even deny imputation. Hope that's clear. So for Israel, let's look at those little, we're going to go into it very, very briefly. For Israel, the cross is a snare. The cross of Christ is a snare. Their evangel, the core of their evangel, is that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. That's the core of their uh, um, uh, circumcision evangel, or you could call it the kingdom evangel. And the horizon starts with Abraham. Not Abram, but Abraham. From the moment he was circumcised and it was expected of him that he would do works next to faith. That moment. Not while he was Abram and that his faith was counted to, as righteousness. Not that moment. I hope you see the distinction. Very important. Because the second one, this one, there it says, faith without works is dead. That's James 2, uh, verse 20. Faith without works is dead. That's in the realm of Israel, not today, not us. So, um, we will see our evangel just now. So, it focuses on righteousness by both works and faith, or faith and works. It covers only Israel and later the rest of the creatures. That means they will be blessed through Israel. And this evangel is temporary of nature. So it will be valid in the next eon or the next world era of the millennium kingdom on earth. Then it will be temporary. However, it will also be working in the beginning stages of the fifth eon where righteousness will rule. However, that will evade. It will uh, pass away slowly and Paul's evangel will emerge slowly. Why? Let's see. For believers today, the cross is not a curse. It is God's wisdom, God's power and his wisdom. The evangel is Jesus died, was buried, and has been roused, vivified. So meaning never to see death again. The horizon starts with Adam, and I would say even before Adam. It starts with the celestials, because also the celestials will be saved through this evangel. Oh yes. And also the ones underneath the earth. So, this evangel reaches much further and covers all creatures. It tackles the root of the problem and it is permanent. It will lead to the salvation of all. And I said it already in the last eon on earth, uh, this evangel will emerge slowly. Why? Because this evangel shows the true heart of God. And what is the true heart of God? Unconditional love. This evangel is unconditional. 
it asks nothing of you or me nothing in return nothing whatsoever while israel's evangel asks something in return that's why the church is in shambles that's why the church is, is in so much confusion because they teach both evangels at the same time they are mixing it and it's un impossible to mix those evangels those two it's impossible otherwise you get a disaster and an anathema a curse that's what you get that's galatians 1 verse 6 read it okay let's do another slide here maybe two let's see oh let's see maybe not okay um this one for believers the cross is the is god's wisdom right let's read about that first corinthians uh, 1 22 to 24 since in fact jews signs are requesting and greeks wisdom are seeking yet we are heralding we believers are heralding christ crucified to jews indeed a snare yet to the nation's stupidity yet to those who are called both jews and greeks christ the power of god and the wisdom of god so you see that jews they get very upset and christians are the spiritual in uh, inheritance or the uh, descendants of jews in paul's days christians get very upset when they hear that god will save all because they think oh my god i have done my best for nothing for naught that's what they think because of their self-righteousness they think that all of what they did is suddenly worth nothing and it's true it's worth nothing but they don't realize it yet they don't want to realize it yet they don't want to hear it yet because this evangel of the cross of christ is uh, humiliating it it's the great equalizer it makes you equal to every human being to every sinner yes to every sinner also that one uh in your neighborhood yes so it it means that uh you cannot you cannot uh, build on your choices and your righteousness it's not possible and i guarantee you like i said already god will bring you to that place of realization that you are nothing and you are not more than any sinner not at all so um, again the time in which we live those who are called are could be both jews and greeks that means there is no distinction in this evangel no distinction it's about individuals who are members of the body of christ so 21 for since in fact in the wisdom of god the world through wisdom knew not god god delights through the stupidity of the heralding to save those who are believing oh my god god has a blast i can tell you that because the wisdom of the world they think they are very wise but god is really laughing and slapping his thighs because his his stupidity is more than the wisdom of the world so just take that in let it sink in think about it ponder on it this is the truth so let's uh, end here and um, we continue in the next video thanks for watching bye bye